thing that's outside of what's physical. So he wouldn't say that it's non-physical, but that's, that's where it lands. It's beyond, it's some other uh, physical place besides ours. That's how physicists say non-physical without using that word. So that that's, was his uh, conclusion. Then Brian Whitworth, I included him um, because he was the last one to publish a paper on this. This is a current thing going on. His paper was called The Physical World as a Virtual Reality. Okay, now he didn't worry about what other was or even why our reality might be digital. He just looked at it and said, well, let's just assume that it is digital. How does that theory work? How does it do with our physics? You know, does it, these four things I told you that, that make a theory a good theory, you know, does it answer, you know, everything we know? Does it have new predictions? You know, make it a better theory than what we have. His conclusion in his paper was, yes, it's a better theory. And uh, he made it very clear. It was, a, it was a pretty complete paper. And again, presented in a, you know, in a, um, in a physics uh, environment, you know, published in a physics journal. So not very many people have heard anything that Fredkin or Bostrom or Whitworth have, have uh, said, and it's on the internet, but probably one hundredth of one percent of the population of this planet will ever read anything published in a, in a physics journal. Uh, so that's why I added the last guy, Jim Elvidge. He now has written a book for everybody. You know, he's taken this idea of um, a digital reality, a simulated reality, and he's popularized it. The book's just out. I haven't read it. I just kind of looked over a little bit, looked at the website, and uh, he clearly is making a case that these scientists have already made. He's bringing it and putting it into the, into the uh, common, uh, common language for everybody. Okay. All right, now we're going to go to the really big guns. Albert uh, Einstein, of course. Um, I'm going to read you a few quotes from Albert Einstein. These are quotes toward the end of his career where he was he had been working on his unified field theory for about 20 years. At this point he had come to some very solid conclusions about where the answer lay but he just couldn't get there. One of his conclusions was that uh, you know space does not have an independent existence. Now, that's pretty profound. Space does not have an independent existence, he said. Reality is merely an illusion. Albeit, he said, a very persistent one. He says, hence it is clear that the space of physics is not, in the last analysis, anything given in nature or independent of human thought. It is a function of our conceptual scheme. Space is a function of mind. Space is conceived by Newton, proved to be an illusion. Okay, now this is not just some crazy physicist from Huntsville, Alabama telling you this. This is Albert Einstein, probably the best scientific mind that our collective uh, human gene pool has ever created. So you have to, you have to give this guy some, uh, some respect when he spent 20 years studying this and these are his conclusions. Okay, now David Bohm, he was a, a physicist that, that studied and worked with Einstein. He and Einstein were collaborators in, on this theory. David Bohm wrote, to meet the challenge before us, our notions of cosmology and the general nature of reality must have room in them to permit a consistent account of consciousness. Okay, physics needs a consistent account of consciousness. Vice versa, our notions of consciousness must have room in them to understand what it means for its content, the content of consciousness, to be reality as a whole. Okay, the two sets of notions together should then be such as to allow for an understanding as how consciousness and reality are related. Okay, now here's one from Einstein written back a letter to David Bohm it said one has to find a possibility to avoid the continuum together with space and time all together but I have not the slightest idea what kind of elementary concepts could be used in such a theory. Okay, and the very last one I'll, I'll uh, quote is uh, Eugene Wigner. He's a Nobel Prize winner, also one of the physicists who was at the forefront of quantum mechanics back in the 20s and 30s. It will remain remarkable in whatever way our future concepts may develop that the very study of the external world, and he's talking about quantum mechanics here, led to the scientific conclusion that the content of the consciousness is the ultimate universal reality. Okay, well remember our assumption that there is a larger system and that system is consciousness. 
Well, it doesn't sound like maybe it's that great a leap from what some of the best thinkers and best scientists, you know, of uh, that, that we know of, the conclusions that they came to. So maybe the leap isn't quite as as wild a leap as as you might have thought in the beginning. Okay, these guys were two of the best, Baum and, and Einstein. They were looking for that larger system for their toe, unified field theory, but they didn't understand digital. Digital science back in the 20s and 30s was either non-existent or just barely becoming existent at that point. So Einstein said he had to avoid the continuum. He couldn't conceive of you know, digital, digital simulation. This just wasn't in his worldview. So he could not do that. Um, they didn't imagine that consciousness, they knew consciousness was part of the answer. They knew that had to be, but they didn't know that consciousness was the computer, that consciousness by its nature is digital. Um, they didn't understand the nature of consciousness because to understand consciousness, as I said when we started, you have to experience it. You can't understand this intellectually. Consciousness is not an objective system. It's a subjective system. It's inside. Each of you are conscious. Your consciousness is subjective. It's your own. It's not an objective thing. So if you understand consciousness, trying to understand it objectively is being inside that little subsystem, trying to understand the big system can't be done. It's illogical. You have to get outside of that box or you can't understand the larger system. Okay, because of my um, many years of research and consciousness and explorations of consciousness and because I'm familiar with physics and digital science, I was able to go where, where they were stopped. Now, I know what you're probably thinking after I said that. If I were sitting out there and were you, this is what I would be thinking. So, so if you've really figured this all out, why haven't we seen your name in lights? It's a good question. It's a very good question. Well, there's a couple of reasons. I think they're good reasons. You, know, you get to make your own decision about that. One, it's all very new. Okay? This is kind of news you know, almost before it happens. This is very new concepts. There's very few uh, physicists. There's probably a couple of dozen, but there's not a lot of physicists. There's not a lot of people of any sort that heard these views because it's all so very, very new. Okay, you're right on the, the cutting edge here. Also, reality concepts are very slow growers because they require major fundamental paradigm shifts, not just one, but several to get here. And those things don't happen quickly. Goodness, quantum mechanics has been around now for, you know, since, the, like I say, the 20s and 30s, these things have been argued. And there's still no conclusion. Fredkin, since 92, you know, for, for 20 years, more than 20 years, 25 years, you know, he's, he's made these statements. Science shows that what he said, physics backs it up very clearly. And um, not a whole lot's happened. You know, it's just slowly growing. Now there's a movement called digital physics, and there are digital physicists probably in every country on the planet. It does spread, but it spreads very, very slowly. So 20 years later, 25 years later, it's just creeping along a little bit at a time because it lies outside of the mainstream. Okay, secondly, I'm not an academic physicist. I work in the real world. Now, what I mean by that is that I do applied physics. Okay, I don't do uh, theoretical physics for a living, but applied physics. Now, outsiders get very little credibility from insiders, and that's true no matter what organization you're in. It's just a fact of life. Also, I appear to have done the impossible. Well, let me rephrase it. I appear to be claiming to have done the impossible. Okay? What that means is that when you mix traditional science, you know, just the objective, with a science that takes in philosophy, metaphysics,